Hello, hello, hello. We got a homeopathic book. Now, let's look at the title of this. Let's give you a shot and then I'll read it out loud. Okay, it's got a little baby on the cover. Aw, so cute. Actually, I don't really like really, really small babies. They're not that cute to me. Um, maybe like eight months and above, they get really cute after that. Or, I don't know, like when they look more cute. Anyway, um, the book is called Clinical Observations of Children's Remedy, Second Revised Edition. I probably recommend getting a second revised edition. By Farouk J. Master, Associate Editor, Pinky A. Billy Moria. Okay. So this book is published by... Who is it published by? I don't even know, man. Lutra, maybe? I'm so used to... Yeah, Lutra. The Netherlands. Cool. Um, okay, so Farouk Masters is kind of a famous homeopath. I mean, not kind of. He is a famous Indian homeopath. And um, what's cool about this book, I think I got it for a discount. I got it like 40 bucks. It's like a 60... I'll tell you something. If this book were 150 bucks, worth buying. If it's a $250 book, it's worth buying. This is a really good book. Um, what's cool about it is you might go through Materia Medica. Materia Medicas are cool. You know, we have all these provings and different things, you know, in there. But what's cool about this, this is clinical observations. Everything in here is what he's seen and what's worked in the clinic. And you have about... You have, there's kind of like a weird like section at the beginning of the book, by the way, which kind of gives into the physical examination part. Hmm, whatever. Um, but if you'll count, hang on, one, two, three, five, I think it's about 50 of them here. The number of remedies is cool though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 40, 40, 50, 50. Looking at probably about 70 to 80 remedies in here. Now, what's cool is like, this guy is like, I mean, these Indian homeopaths see a lot, a lot of people. If you're going to work with children and homeopathy, this book is a must. It's absolutely a must. Beautiful book. The binding is pretty good, I have to say. I have no complaints on the binding. The paper's pretty good. I do have one complaint, though. One complaint only, which you'll see when you look at my book. You see up here, up here, I've written in all the remedy. If you look through it, I've literally handwritten in. I got this used, and the person that used it before me did the same thing, just on like five or six remedies. And at first I saw, I saw that, and I said, why, why do I, you know, who cares, you know, why would I do that? And as I started reading the book, I realized I had to do it on every single page. You see that on the top? Like the left and right hand corners on the top. So anyway, I did that, and it makes the book, uh, reading the book a lot easier because, you know, when I'm, whenever I just open it up and read it, it's also easy to find remedies just that, that way. But when I look through um, a remedy I'm not that familiar with, and, it, you know, I'm reading it, I can quickly see what it is on the upper right and left-hand corner. So if they make a third edition, please, guys, fix that. It's a simple fix, you know. Uh, it'll take the quality of the book up to a higher level. And I think generally... Books sh should have um, things on the upper right and left hand corners, um, like information, little bits. It's like it's like you're missing an opportunity to help the reader get more information, and it's just kind of out of the way. It's a great way of indexing. Okay, uh, I'm really into information design, so that's pretty cool uh, to to do that kind of stuff. And it's kind of annoying that that I you know I spent probably about forty minutes just going through each remedy and doing that on here. Anyway, aside from that, it's not that important. If you get it, do the same thing I did and you'll be much happier uh, than if you don't. But let's just pick a remedy that's, in this case, let's pick a remedy that, um, okay. Like, check this out. This is so cool. Uh, Calibromatum, okay. So Calibrom, they call it, right? Calibrom children resemble Ambria, um, Gracia, Hyosiamus, Megali, Stramonium, and um, Tarantula children. So right off the bat, he's giving you 
It's very practical, the way it's designed. It's very intelligent. Now, some of his other books I got, I don't get much out of them. Like, I got the skin book from him. I don't get much out of it. It's kind of a, eh, you know? I'm sure it's full of beautiful information, but the way it's put together. Now, the way this is put together, maybe it was, you know, the associated editor or something, but, I mean, this is awesome. So, identifying features. We uh, go to mind. So, I'm just going to read through this real quick, and then I'm not going to dwell too deep on this remedy, but I'm just going to kind of give you a feel for how it's set up. So feeling of guilt arise readily around issues of morality, sex, and neglecting their duty. This is the mind feature, by the way. A nervous restlessness, cannot sit still, move, must move around or keep occupied. Many psychosexual problems arise at puberty in children of families where sex is considered taboo. Night terrors in children who see horrible visions and awake shrieking and recognizing no one. The child constantly imagines that he is singled out as an object of divine wrath. Usually indicated in children who come from a strict religious background where their upbringing is greatly influenced by issues of morality, crime, and guilt. Physical. Fidgety hands, in parentheses next to his tarantula, and feet. Fat, fair, lethargic, heavy-looking, and dull. In spite of apparent dullness, there is a certain amount of local restlessness. So, that was the physical. Now we're going to just kind of... He, he revisits the mind again, but it, now this time it's more in-depth. Okay, so it's kind of giving you more, kind of uh, a deeper sense from what we just covered. Answers in monosyllables or answers no to all questions. Anxiety at night, especially in the dentitional age group. Brain fog with failure of mental power, loss of memory. Children who are, are not getting on well at school academically, they are dull and apparently lack intelligence. Depressive disorders that arise from the death of loved ones. Early masturbation with presence of tremendous guilt. By the way, like, I'm not reading all of this, that there's parentheses and kind of like suggestions to look into other remedies. Like the last one I read, there's Staphysagria next to it. Fidgetiness. Uh, right, like right here it says, iodine and merc, mercurius, look those up. Uh, fidgetiness, constantly playing with fingers, fumbling with his shoes or clothes, picking with fingers, wringing his hands, etc. Amid, amidst or reverses words when talking and writing, want of moral feeling, tends to lie, steal, and cheat. Writing is very poor and indistinct. Children who habitually weep without an adequate cause. Dullness and slow... I mean, just, just a sad child here. I mean, it's just, I mean but you know what's an, another interesting thing that I've, I've learned about homeopathy is you have to look at all remedies in a kind of a spectrum type of way. So obviously in a child, it can have really extreme symptoms for, let's say, calibrum. But when you look at an adult, some things that are okay for a child to do, they're kind of annoying and they're kind of an extreme behavior. When an adult does it, it's really bad. It's really extreme. Okay? So, so and, and, and adults have ways of masking these things. So this is a really, you have to really understand psychology and the mind to... Um, Kind of pierce through some of these remedies and get get you know get into this you know this this, this remedy you know there's obviously like a lot of suppressed energy this energy trying to come out so this fidgetiness um, their mind isn't working properly they're kind of like out of it in some way uh, anyway let's just go on, going on here let's just go forward uh, dullness and slowness answers slowly and has to repeat the question first exuberance fruitlessly busy hates taking music lessons, especially when trying to learn the piano, on trivial issues of emotional conflicts, the feeling of being forsaken by God and friends comes up very easily, indicating a very strong emotional insecurity, restlessness at night, stage fright, suspicious, useful in cases of dyslexia, mental retardation, where the development of the child is arrested, so it's almost like an autistic type thing, 
in a way, not necessarily, but there's delayed development. So anyway, a very, very superb book. book. I love it. Um, you know, it, there's probably only, I, I don't know if this, is, this might be one of the best books on the subject matter of Materia Medica for children's remedies. And there's a couple of other books I'm going to review on uh, children's remedies, but this is definitely um, a beauty. You know, this is, this is hot stuff right here. Thank you for your time.